Oh, right. I get it now. To be honest, though, it was me who needed your help, not Papa Fernando. <laughs> I can't fault that logic. Who are the other races? I know them. It's the Born Fast crew. They're raring to go. Toy is eager. But this isn't really a street race. There's no checkpoints, just the finish line. So keep to the route and get there first. to overstate the effect that the Beetle had when it arrived in Mexico in 1954. Before that, all we had were these huge American cars. So this new European-style car with its shape and light chassis and those adorable headlights and an engine that anyone with a tractor could fix was, well, a complete game changer. They were so exciting that they were displayed at the Ciudad Universitaria in Mexico City and there were lines to come and see this new car. Production of the Beatles started in Mexico soon after seven of them finished the Carrera Panamericana. Before... Before that, people were a bit worried about reliability, you see? We Mexicans love a good-looking car, but a car that... that can do work is better. The Panamericana convinced us, and in 61, Automex had assembled 250 of them. By 62, the first plant had opened in Halostock, making 10 of them a day. But we love that car. So another plant opened in Puebla in 1967, and in 71, El Bocho became the official taxi of Mexico City, which is why you see so many of them today. That is a great car. Probably the most iconic car in all of Mexico. Ay, es increíble que un auto tan pequeño deje un vacío tan grande. Adiós, Sedan. Thanks. I'll call you when I've got that next one ready. idea. Another one. What happened to the previous idea? This one is better. Meet me in town. I have two cars here. A first-generation Volkswagen and a seventh-generation Volkswagen Golf, made in Mexico for almost half a century. Sadly, they stopped building them in 2021. But we can still race them. What do you say? To make it fair, I will give you a chance to make an informed choice. Let's go for a test drive. And I've got lots to tell you about Volkswagen Mexico. Volkswagen Mexico headquarters are in Puebla City. It started production in 1967 with the famous Beetle, as we call it, the Bocho. made multiple attempts at replacing the famous Beetle with newer models, but all of them failed way short of achieving the production figures until the Volkswagen Golf came into play. The 
first generation was released in Mexico as the Volkswagen Caribe and had quite a few variations, including the Golf GTI you're driving right now. BW engineers, inspired by the middle GSR, designed and prototyped the Golf in secret as a skunk works project. Little did they know that the Golf GTI would become the hot hatch. Shall we jump 40 years in the future and try the 7th generation? The 7th generation of the Golf first appeared in 2012. This version is the Volkswagen Golf R, R meaning race. This was the fastest golf in the range, with a 0 to 60 time of 5.1 seconds. Volkswagen Mexico produced all seven generations of the Golf, totaling more than 2 million units over 44 years. In fact, a lot of Golfs you find in the US were built here. All right, all right, enough driving around. Let's go head to head, after you've had a chance to rest. I'm a fair man. I'll let you choose. Which Golf do you want to drive for our little race? I'll take the Golf GTI. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Calculating route. You have arrived at your destination.
<laughs> I hope you know some shortcuts. See you at the finish line. Don't make me wait for too long. I see what you're doing, but you still can't win. <laughs> What a race! I am actually surprised the first generation still holds up. I'm sure you didn't cheat. About the old wolf in the swamp. Are we going to a zoo? A swamp? I'll pick you up. I hope you know some shortcuts. See you at the finish line. Don't make me wait for too long. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> what a race! The difference 40 years makes! That's the old wolf. <laughs> no, no, that's an old truck. The wolf is waiting for us at the swamp. Haley asked us to clear some debris. And I've got just the car. But we need to get there first. Of course. Who do you think I am? The driver who destroyed a record-breaking amount of fences. Huh. That's fair. Yards, turn right. Turn right. Two hundred yards, turn right. Turn right. See? Put it here in one piece. <laughs> and give me a few heart attacks. And now, let me introduce you to the fourth Lobo. This car is more your style. Now that's a hecking good wolf. We call it Lobo here. Marketing in this country is outstanding. Let's get to work. See all that Russian stuff? Clear it out. What? No! It's not just an excuse to throw the Lobo around. It is just an excuse to throw the Lobo around. In the 90s, Ford decided that they needed to rebrand the F-150 for the Mexican market. And the name Lobo just has a real ring to it. They started using the badge in 1997, and the rest is history. The Ford Lobo quickly became one of the most popular vehicles in the country. Lobo is still used for the modern Rangers, like the one based on the F-150 Raptor you're driving. But we don't just call it Lobo. No, no. We call it... Lobo Raptor. So it's the same car? No, there are loads of differences, like a dog and a wolf. Lobo only comes in XLT and with higher trim levels. The base version is still sold in Mexico as the F-150, but the Lobo is the Elite F-150.
Great, job's done. And the scratches will buff right out. Thanks for the help. Now I just need to get my Abuelo's old F-100 back to the garage. I've got 1,400 horses and I need you to help with them. I think I know what this is. I'll be right over. Yards, turn right. Turn right. Recalculating route. Yards, turn right. Turn right. In four hundred yards, turn left. In 400 yards, you will arrive at your destination. In 100 yards, turn right. arrived at your destination. Let's take this down to the beach. Stick it in AWD if you like. There's some nice curves up ahead. Calm down! I know you like to go fast, but I had a big breakfast. This is 2021's EV of the year, and it was up against things like the Taycan and the e-tron and the Recharge. It set three Guinness World Records, and it's inspired by the beautiful original Mac 1. And I'm telling you all of this because the Mac E was built right here in Mexico at Cuautitlan Assembly. Bautitlan Assembly has been building cars since the 60s. And more than 2.2 million cars later, we're sitting in an actual space machine made here in Mexico. Quite a journey from Cougars and Thunderbirds and F-150s to this. This isn't just a prototype. Bautitlan Assembly does a range of options for the Mac E. A 68 kilowatt hour standard and an 88 kilowatt hour extended range version. It will give you over 300 miles of range on a single charge. Whoa! How do you make it go around corners like that? I'm really asking. The Performance GT version is the really wild one. 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. This one is uh, quite a bit faster. Honestly, when I first tried it, I had to go and sit in a quiet room for a bit. And I've flown airplanes in a storm. It's wild tech. You can switch from all-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive at the touch of a button. And when you get into tuning, you can basically tweak every one of the seven engines individually. 
It can make 1,400 horsepower and a ton of downforce at 160 miles per hour thanks to the Aero tube. So what you're saying is, not bad for something that weighs more than the F-150 of yours. Yes. And there we go. Sunrise over the sea. Beautiful. But we're not done. There's one more thing to look at. I'll let you know as soon as I have uh, found it. Okay, this one will be epic. I found a Porsche Carrera. You know what that means? Racing? And what do you mean, found? <laughs> In a barn, of course. And of course it's racing. Come meet me at Guanajuato. This beauty got her name from the Carrera Panamericana. The races don't run anymore, but who can blame us if we take it out one more time? Right? Let's see what this car can do. There's Jamin! Guess he wanted one last race. Let's do this! The original Panamericana ran from 1950 to 1954, originally celebrating the opening of the Mexican section of the longest road in the world, the Panamericana Highway. The first race had 132 competitors, and everyone turned up. Amateurs to F1 drivers, men, women, professionals, anyone who had a car. Do you know anyone who participated? Alejo thinks Papa Fernando did. But she thinks Papa Fernando did everything. I know we used to go to the races with my grandfather. Ah, que buenos recuerdos. There was no speed limit before 2012, and you'd see cars doing 180 miles per hour. Not that I'd know anything about that. 2,178 miles of the Pan American Highway run through Mexico. The race itself had nine stages and lasted five days. But the sheer distance wasn't the only challenge. Constant changes in the elevation from sea level to three kilometers up. The most challenging road race in the world. The winner of the very first Carrera Panamericana was Herschel McGriff, who drove an Oldsmobile 88 at an average speed of 88 miles per hour. The Porsche Carrera got its name thanks to Hans Hermann, who won the small sports cars category in 1954. He drove the Porsche 550 Spider and came third overall. He was sick before the race and his tires came off at the start. He really pulled through against the odds. Porsche had six cars competing in 1954 and all of them made it through the end. A lot of others didn't, let me tell you. Enjoying yourself, are you? Yeah, I kind of had a feeling you were. 1954 was the last... year the original Carrera Panamericana took place, but it gave us the most famous Porsche model, the Carrera you're driving right now. The Carrera RS 2.7 was the first production street racing 911. It was built on the 911 SL 2.4, the fastest Porsche you could buy at the time. And the 
popular choice in the later Carrera Panamericana races. The race was revived in 1988 and ran to 2016, staying true to the original races with high-speed road stages. The routes for the race were carefully selected every year by... This is Jamin's exit. It's been fun, my friend. Take care. Looking forward to seeing what you can do out there. Have fun now, yeah? Great race. Almost like we did a little Panamericana with a friend. Anyways, hope you had fun with this little stroll through cars hechos in Mexico. It was great. And let me know if you uh, find any other cars like that. So we're coming to the end of my YouTube video right now, so give a thumbs up button if you like the video so much. Click on that bell button to subscribe for more content, and if you saw the recent video interesting, share the comment right below the description so you can share some thoughts and feelings with everybody in the community and make them feel welcome. So I make a happy Corona 95. You all have a great day and peace out.